Hello crafters, Nicole here today and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be using some of the September 2020 release Mama Elephant release products for this slimline card where I'm actually taking some stamps and the Slim Woodland die cover that are more winter Christmas theme and we're going to create a fall themed card with them. I love being able to take products that might specifically be for one theme or occasion and using them for something else. Here are the products we're using. We're using Sincerely Yours, Toasty Friends, the Slim Woodland cover, and then we're also gonna be using the Tree Branches cover, which actually is from a few releases back. I've already loaded up my Misty with the images that we'll be using from Sincerely Yours and Toasty Friends. Here a few weeks ago, I asked what from the release you guys wanted to see, and Sincerely Yours was one of them that was very, very high up there. Um, Penguin Tree is also up there. I know I'm not using it today, so stay tuned because it is coming, but definitely Sincerely Yours. One of the things about Sincerely Yours is it is not for sure holiday themed. It definitely can be. There is one holiday sentiment in here. It says, may all your Christmas wishes come true. There's also lots of love, hugs and kisses, XOXO. So think about, think way ahead to Valentine's Day. Um, I think that, I mean, that would work for any occasion, but I'm just throwing out there, definitely love uh, Valentine's. And then we're gonna be using just a card to let you know that I miss you. That is an all occasion sentiment, which I totally love. So we're using mostly images from Sincerely Yours, but we are gonna pull the bunny from Toasty Friends and color that. Now, the reason the outline is so light here is we are stamping on Bristol Smooth cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Jellyfish No Line Coloring ink and doing some no line coloring. Oh, it felt so good to do some no line coloring. I haven't done any in a couple of weeks and this was definitely, um, a very, very relaxing, fun project to do. I love the Mama Elephant Bunnies anyway. I know I have referenced it before in videos, but um, I had a friend who was just a super huge fan of Mama Elephant, but especially anything that was bunnies, and we lost her here a couple years ago. And so anytime I get to create with the bunnies, I just always think of her, and it's such a good memory. And so this was definitely a card that uh, was inspired by Linda. And I am gonna color all of these cuties in with some mid-brown beige and light beige. That's the color for our bunnies with pale pink for the insides of the ears. So stinking cute. I love that even when you color over it, you can kind of see the eyes and the nose and the mouth. I will be taking a black fine tip pen, a uh, Tombow multi-liner, I think is what it's called. I'll link it up in the supplies. It's what I use when I wanna add in the detail. So we will be using that to draw faces back in, to draw in their little whiskers. But the chair that she's sitting in, I am coloring this in with peacock blue, Persian green. I know the color is so misleading. That's the color I'm coloring with right now. I call that teal, but the official name is Persian green and a blender. And it's giving us this beautiful teal green, aquamarine, whatever you wanna call it, armchair. I love this image. Okay, so let's say you do wanna do a holiday card. In the Toasty Friends stamp set, there's actually a fireplace and a rug. How cute, and a stocking. How cute to make a Christmas scene with this. So let me know, do you wanna see that card? Um, in the future, because I'm planning out all my October projects, and even though there is an October release from Mama Elephant coming, if there is enough interest, I will try to fit that in if you wanna see um, kind of a more holiday-themed card using some of these same stamps. And just wanna throw that out, out, this out there as well. One of the other highest requested 
Mama Elephant cards from the last time I asked you guys what you wanted to see from this release was mixing and matching Little Agenda. Um, anything across the Little Agenda. So it's on my list, you guys. I have a pretty long list going. I have had a lot of requests, which I love. I want to know what you guys want to see. So definitely always leave me a comment. Um, I can't always promise that you're going to see everything that you request, but I'm going to do my very, very best to honor as many of those as possible. Drawing in all the little details. We gave Mama Bunny some eyelashes. We're going to give uh, one of the other little bunnies. I think the little bunny that's going to be sitting down over to her right. We'll give her some little eyelashes too. And what I love is you can go through your mama elephant stash and completely uh, find any set that has bunnies in it. And I think you could probably mix and match. I think that is fantastic. I know I mentioned this in videos where I use Lawn Fawn and mama elephant, but one of my favorite things about their collections is that is the consistency and that they keep bringing out more images, more critters, whatever it might be, um, the little agenda series. They mix and match and work together. That is one of my very favorite things to do is to mix and match, to take older sets that you might have and pair them with new things, like maybe new dies or cover dies or whatever it might be, or even stamp sets, and mix and match and really extend the life of the products that we already own and love, but still get to have and play with some of the new things as well. One of my favorite things about the no line coloring, just as I'm, you know, doing the voiceover and we're going through the coloring process here and I'm watching it on screen, is watching them come to life. I think it's so rewarding when doing this, I think it anyway, even with, you know, outline stamped images where we're coloring them in, it's rewarding to watch them come to life with color, but I definitely, definitely love it with no line coloring because there's not even really any detail to faces until you go back in and add that in. But the shading is just so lovely and fun. Now, because this is a fall themed card, I didn't go with bright, you know, color combinations. So if you have uh, watched some of my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker coloring videos before, and you've seen me use a lot of primaries or brights, because I do tend to gravitate to towards a lot of the same colors when using them, I opted to really go a different direction because I know I'm going to be inking up some cardstock and die cutting leaves from it to uh, build these fa this falling leaf background. I wanted to tie that in with my colors. Primary colors just aren't gonna give the same feel and effect. Uh, bright rainbow colors, not gonna give us the same feel and effect. So I definitely was very conscious of my color choices. I know that I have listed them across the bottom of the screen today. I am always having to move it around. It really depends on where the coloring falls in the video. I know a lot of you really like to be able to see the color name or number, depending on what coloring medium I'm using, um, somewhere on the screen. And I try to make it as unobtrusive as possible. And I seem to be coloring a little high up in the frame today, so I listed it across the bottom but you can also find that information listed out on my blog that coordinates with this. And there is a link to that in the little box under the video here on YouTube. Another question I get all the time about the Zigs is how to buy them. I will tell you, um, there are a lot of great sets out there. I can't tell you off the top of my head which one to buy. I bought mine individually. Um, I, when they first came out, and I've had mine for years now, I wasn't really sure that I wanted a new coloring medium. I was happy with Copics. I didn't think I would like them. Um, I bought a few. I didn't make a huge investment of the Zigs. 
and I tried them on watercolor cardstock and hated them. I was like, oh, these are not gonna work. Uh, definitely no. And then someone said use Bristol Smooth cardstock with them and it was a game changer for me. So because I had already invested in a few individuals, I didn't buy a set because there would be a lot of duplicates. And instead, I just kind of added to my collection over time. I do not have all of the colors. Um, I probably have most of them at this point, but I don't have all of them. Um, the other question I am asked often is if they're refillable, they are not, and how many I've had to replace. I have replaced only two or three. It seems like only two. The blender, because it actually did run out, it's a blender and it's a, it's a real blender. Um, it will blend out things to light. I use it a lot. So I don't think that that's crazy that it, it um, needed replaced. And then I had to replace, I believe, light carmine. I, either that or sugared almond pink. It, one of those. Um, I ruined the tip. I went to put the lid on and I wasn't paying attention. It was one of those things that I was doing not looking at it and I smashed the tip and I completely just destroyed it where it didn't have that nice fine tip. It didn't color nice. I may have replaced both light carmine and sugared almond pink doing that. So anymore, I'm really careful about that because neither of those markers needed replaced, but I did ruin the tip of them. So you, I've had mine for over five years, you guys, uh, five to six years, gosh, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And they're still going strong. So I think that it's a great investment because they do last a long time. We are getting these images colored, aren't we? Now, one image that's not going to be a bunny, there is a little mouse in Sincerely Yours. Um, and I thought he was just too cute not to color and not to add to this. So we are going to add him to our little scene because I think he's fun. I always like the addition of something a little unexpected or tiny. And please remember, as I mentioned a little bit ago, so many stamp sets have bunnies in them. There's a the little crafting bunnies. I can't think of the stamp set off the top of my head. I wish I could. Um, I will look it up and add it in my blog post. So, um, it would be cute with these because you could have all these card making bunnies uh, hanging out and doing all the card making. I think that would be really, really fun. The mouse is gonna be a little dark gray and light gray with some pale pink for the inside of the ear. He's teeny, teeny, tiny. So, I mean, I'm only adding the littlest bit of dark gray to him and then blending him out with the light gray marker and we want to add in all the great detail for his cute little face. Normally I wouldn't say a mouse is cute, but when it's in stamp form, I do like it. For our thought bubble, which is actually going to serve as the great place for our sentiment, we're going to outline it with blue gray, blend it out just a little bit with the blender to kind of soften and lighten that line and pull that light blue a little bit out. And here, after a bit, we'll stamp our sentiment in the center of this. I'm gonna go ahead and set this panel aside for now while we work on building our background. Off camera, I have die cut the Slim Woodland Creative Cuts cover from some smooth white cardstock, and we are masking off from the stitching line to the outside edge with a little post-it tape. I like this because it instantly looks like it's been matted. You wouldn't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, you could just set to ink blending it up, but I always like it because I think it just kind of frames it up beautifully. Then I'm not actually gonna do any additional masking. I kind of thought I would. You'll probably see me do that here in a little bit, but I don't mind the trees blending into our grassy landscape out in the forest that much. So I'm blending in some crushed olive distress ink first. And then we will blend in a darker green on top of that. So only a little bit of crushed olive will shine through. So this is a little forest moss and you can see, I thought I was gonna use it and it actually kind of made this harsh line that I'm gonna have to go pretty deep and hard 
with forest moss over here, which is okay because it's gonna give it that moody fall look that I'm going for. Again, color choices are so important. Not going with the mowed lawn and twisted citron and the maybe salty ocean and things like that that I would normally use for sky and, and grass. We want this to be a fall scene. Then for the trees and the branches that are along the upper edge of this panel, we're gonna use gathered twigs and ground espresso. Something I wanna mention about this is uh, it does die cut a snowy center. I'm just discarding that and we're not using it today um, since we're not creating a winter themed card. I'm gonna clean my work surface real quick with a microfiber cloth, just wipe away some of that ink and then I've got a panel that we're going to layer back behind and that's gonna have our sky. I went with a moody kind of night sky, like they're huddled around their little, you know, forest den, whatever, uh, hanging out card making, whatever. It's, you know, in my mind, I'm telling myself a little story while I'm building this. It might not be totally realistic because I don't know any bunnies who make cards, but you know what I'm talking about. So this is chipped sapphire and peacock feathers. I lay down peacock feathers first. That's gonna give it kind of a light, like, I don't know, almost like a, a spotlight type of effect down near the horizon line of the grass. And then we're blending chipped sapphire into this. Once I've done that, I actually went back with peacock feathers and blended over chipped sapphire, really get kind of with a heavy hand. I wasn't, quite sure that I was loving the direction this was going, honestly, um, but as it dried, it looks phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So sometimes that happens. Be persistent, stay with it, um, and it will all work out. I am going to add some splatter all over the background for a night sky, kind of like stars in the night sky. We'll use Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. It's my favorite product for this. Um, it has a beautiful shimmer to it. I'm gonna put a little on my glass matte work surface, pick it up with a small paintbrush and splatter this all over the sky. And when this dries, it's just the most beautiful little splatters all over. And when you're using it over Distress Ink, it does kind of wick away some of the color so it'll be a little lighter underneath those, especially if, if you'd use an oxide. I use regular Distress inks here today. Okay, next, the last element I need to create are some little leaves. I wanna add some leaves to the trees. I wanna add some down on the ground. And I went to my Mama Elephant collection and I grabbed the tree branches cover, but I don't wanna ink up all those teeny tiny little leaves after I've die cut them. That's gonna be a major pain. So I'm actually adding color to cardstock scraps. Um, we're using mustard seed, rusty hinge, aged mahogany, um, and some crushed olive. We're using all of those nice fall leaf colors and I'm just making some, you know, blends on cardstock basically. Not worrying a whole lot about blending it perfectly because we're going to take these teeny tiny leaf dies and die cut them from these blends. This is a nice hack. I have lots of, of cardstock left after I die cut these to you guys. So I can save these and die cut even more leaves if I wanna create another fall themed card. I went ahead and die cut those off camera. I've got them all in a little dish on my work surface and I'm going to attach my slim woodland cover to the background with a little 1 8 inch double-sided tape just around the four edges of the woodland cover. I'm going to take the background to the woodland cover. I think that might be a little easier. And look at that beautiful background, you guys. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm going to use some craft tweezers and a little liquid glue. You're going to have to be a little persistent. It is a little tricky. Uh, just to kind of lift everything up. I'm using my Spellbinders tool in one, the piercing end of that to kind of lift up the tree a bit and tuck those leaves where I want them to go. 
but it is worth it. I love that it just looks like these kind of bare trees that have only a few leaves left on them. And then after we attach all of our little scene down below on our card, I'm gonna go in and add some little leaves down there too for the leaves that have fallen down on the ground. But I love with just the addition of a few little leaves, instantly we've got a fall themed card. Isn't that fun? Um, you could color those leaves in any color. Let's think of sp think ahead to spring or summer. We could fill these trees with green leaves and wouldn't that be a sweet little scene as well? So def and switch up your colors for the background, for um, landscape, whatever it might be. Definitely can use this year round. One of my favorite things about this Slim Woodland is just if you remove the snowy background, this can be an any time of year background card with just a few minor adjustments. And aren't those leaves pretty? Such an easy way to add color to white cardstock and then just die cut um, those ink blends using your dies. And then I like to think it's these two trees that kind of come across and meet in the middle. So I'm going to add some leaves across the top here as well. I think actually a couple of them get covered up with the thought bubble, but that's okay. I kind of forgot that my thought bubble was going to be up high like that. Now, I always like to start generally with the, the largest image for the scene, so we make sure and get that where we want it to go. I don't want Mama Bunny to be right in the center, so we're just going to shift her just left of center. And then we're going to have one of the little bunny guys down here on the floor or on the ground writing out his card. And then we'll have another one over on the right. We're going to add our little mouse buddy over here on the left. And then our bunnies enjoying a mug of hot cocoa and a cup of milk and cookies are going to be over here on the right. We're going to leave a nice little spot kind of just right of center for that thought bubble, which we will finish up and add here in just a second. I'm adding in some of those additional leaves and things along the ground. I had quite a few and I still have quite a few left, so I can definitely use those for another project um, since I have so many. The dies actually cut a lot of leaves, which is good, as I didn't have to go back and create a whole bunch of extra to make sure I had enough. Let's go ahead and grab our Misty. Let's grab our cardstock. I didn't die cut the thought bubble yet because it's much easier to stamp the sentiment while it is still in the background. So we're just gonna grab that, use our Misty to line it up, use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp just a card to let you know that I miss you. Then we will die cut our thought bubble and this is actually going to be popped up with a little foam adhesive. It's going to extend just a tiny bit above this panel. But one thing I forgot to mention about the Slim Woodland is it is not quite as big as the Slimline card base. So a Slimline card base measures three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. This is going to be just a teeny tiny bit smaller, so it's actually still going to fit within the confines of the card. It just goes a little bit above this panel, which is something I really like. We're popping that up with some foam adhesive squares. And then the last thing we have to do is create our card base, place this panel on our card base, and that is it. Our Slim Woodland Fall Scene Card using new release products from the September 2020 Mama Elephant release is all finished. I hope this video has inspired you to try using some of your occasional type products for different occasions or seasons. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.